Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Kersitter and I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And today I'm really excited because I wanna show you one of my absolute favorite features in the brand new Ableton Live 11 beta, which is the hybrid reverb. I use a lot of reverbs in my own productions and hybrid reverb is very quickly becoming my favorite reverb. And I wanna show you why you should be excited about it as well. Let's go ahead and take a look. So the hybrid reverb is the combination of two different effects you already have access to in Ableton Live 10, the convolution reverb and the aptly named reverb device. The convolution reverb is a max for live device that if you are not using already and you own Ableton Live Suite, check this out. It's already installed on your computer. It's totally worth it. This is an amazing, amazing reverb. And then the regular reverb you guys have probably already used before if you have used any reverb at all. So it's gonna take these two ideas and kind of squash them together into one device plus add a bunch of extra really cool features. So I'm gonna turn these guys off for right now and let's dive into the hybrid reverb. So within the hybrid reverb inter interface, you can see over on the left side, it's gonna be all of the convolution settings and on the right side, it's gonna be all of the algorithmic settings. So generally you can choose to either use one of them or, or both of them together. So I can use just the algorithm, just the convolution. I can use them in a serial fashion, which means my signal will be sent through the convolution first and then through my algorithm or parallel from each other. And then you can use this blend control to use like a dry wet to control the amount of one versus the other, which is really, really handy. For the purposes of doing this for right now, I'm gonna focus on one at a time, uh, but using both together is a fantastic way to just get a lot out of this device. The other really important control I wanna talk about before I dive too deep into it is this send control. This is super, super important. This is the reason this reverb will be my favorite reverb for years to come. So to understand how this works, we need to first take a look at the dry wet control on our just regular reverb. So this is the, the old Live 10 reverb. So if I turn the wet signal up, check out what happens to my sound. So here's my sound with no reverb, it's just a drum loop. And then as I turn this up, we get more reverb. But if I keep turning this up, Check out what happens to my sound. It sounds much more distant, sounds farther away, and also gets a lot quieter. And I lose a lot of the punch or the impact of my drums. So when you're dealing with the dry wet signal here, as the volume of the reverb goes up, the volume of the signal, the dry signal goes down. However, if I'm using the hybrid reverb, I have this send knob here, which means if I start with the send knob turned down, there's no reverb. But as I turn this up, If I crank the signal on the send signal up, the volume doesn't change. It stays really loud. So I can have a really heavy reverb signal without having to use my return tracks. So traditionally you'd use a return track and use your send knob here to control the signal here in order to maintain volume. I don't need to do that anymore. I can use hybrid reverb as an insert effect. So just putting that effect on that track and I'm good to go. So a combination of using the send knob plus the dry wet control to get the proper mixture of dry signal and wet signal and maintain volume, maintain your transients and just make sure everything sounds exactly the way you want. This is massively, massively important. I love this control. This, this alone makes this one of my favorite reverbs. So check that out. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. So with that in mind, let's take a look at our convolution. So if you've used the regular convolution reverb before, you know that there's two drop down menus here. We have a folder full of impulse response files, and then we have different impulse responses. So we can go in here and pick like real places, and then here's a bunch of places. As of right now, because this is currently in beta, uh, we only have a handful of folders and we only have a handful of spaces to choose from. I'm assuming that by the time Live 11 is ready for release, we will have most, if not all, of the spaces we had for con the convolution reverb, plus maybe some new ones. I'm not entirely sure. But you can see we have some of the basics here in here um, with a few options to play around with. So there's not a huge amount of controls they give you for convolution reverb. The main two controls they're gonna give you are the decay and the size. And this is really important because a lot of these impulse responses are really, really long. If we listen to this, that's a really long decay, which we might not necessarily want. So we can turn it down with either decay or the size. The decay will act like a volume envelope. So it'll start turning the volume down over time. So if I turn this down, you can actually see it changing the file there. So 
so we can get a bit more of a reasonable decay time by turning this down. Or we can use the size, we can use both if we want. Um, and so up here, we can actually see the length of our impulse response. So if I start turning this down, you can see the length here changes, which also gets us a bit more of a reasonable amount of time. So you can use one or both of these together to get the exact amount of decay that you want. If you want to, you can also add some attack to it. You can actually see how it affects the, the impulse response there, or you can turn those settings off. But not a whole lot of tweaking you're gonna to need to do here to make this sound good. You mostly just pick an impulse response that you think sounds really good, that makes sense for your sound, and then you adjust the decay and or the size to your own personal taste. But that's basically it. Really, uh, if you're used to using the convolution reverb, exact same kind of process is gonna, is gonna be involved here. So let's switch things over to the algorithm. And this is what I really wanna talk about because the algorithm is way better than the algorithm in the regular library reverb. I'm not exactly sure what the you know, technical difference is between them, but all these algorithms, not only are there five of them, but they all sound amazing and they all sound very different. So I wanna talk about each one individually for you guys real quick, just so you can get a sense of what this does. So the dark hall is pretty clean sounding, nothing too like off the wall with this. Um, probably the most similar to the live reverb, the, the old live reverb, uh, but does give you a lot more features. Some of these features will, you'll recognize from other reverbs, things like decay time, size, and shape. Those are all features that you have access to. Uh, we have decay time, we got shape, and we got size right here. So those are all things you've seen before if you've used the live reverb. But just to test them out really quick, decay time is gonna be how long it's going to resonate You can get longer decay time or shorter decay time. Size is going to be the size of our imaginary room. So if you turn this way down, it's gonna sound much closer. Or if I turn this up really high, sounds like it's in a, a much larger room. And then uh, I'm gonna jump over to shape just because it's, it's a feature that's been around for a long time. This is going to be the shape of our imaginary room. So if I turn this down, it's gonna resonate a little bit more. And if I turn this up, going to sound like it's like a bit more spread out. On top of that, we have a damping control. This is something we'll see on a handful of these algorithms. This is essentially, it sounds kind of like a high shelf filter. So as you turn this up, you're going to get less high frequencies. So I'm going to turn this down first. So it sounds a little bit more muted. So pretty standard kind of like high shelf filter. And then we have the base multiplier. This is a really interesting control that's pretty new. I haven't seen this on any, uh, at least any other live reverbs. This is going to increase or decrease the timing of your decay specifically for your base. So it's not gonna affect anything in any of your high frequencies. So if I turn this down, I'm gonna have a shorter decay time on my low frequencies and a higher decay time on my longer or my higher frequencies. And as I turn this up, So here you can hear the low frequencies resonate out for longer. And this is percentage based off of your decay time. The other control that's relevant to this is going to be the base X. This is the base crossover. This is going to choose which frequencies are low frequencies for the multiplier and which ones are high frequencies for not being multiplied. So which right now is set to 440 Hertz. Other than that, we have a few other pretty standard uh, reverb controls. We have de uh, delay time. This is an extra pre-delay that will be in addition to your global pre-delay that applies to both your convolution and your algorithm. So if I turn this up, you'll hear this as a delay. And all your reverbs will be late. And then we have this mod control. Uh, this is supposed to add like a chorusing effect to your sound. However, in my experimenting with this, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It's not super noticeable. Even if you crank it all the way, You don't really hear much of a difference. It's audible, but it's very, very subtle. So I have not noticed this doing a whole lot to my sound um, based off of the settings I've been trying out. And then lastly, we have a freeze control. This is going to take the output of your reverb and just freeze it and echo it forever. And that'll just echo forever until I hit the button to unfreeze it. On top of that, there's a new feature involved with this, which is the input freeze in, which means it will keep on sending a signal into your freeze, which we can try out. So it's frozen, and then I add more. 
that does end up getting very loud and very fast, so I'd be careful with that one. But that's basically it for the dark hall. Pretty straightforward. If you're looking to do like a pretty like just standard algorithmic reverb, works really well, sounds super clean, really liking it. After that, we have the quartz. This is gonna be mostly the same settings, but it's gonna give you a few different options. So decay, size, these are all damping. These are all things we've seen before. Delay, mod, 100% the same. The three new controls here is we now have a low damping. This is gonna be like a low shelf. So as I turn this up, it's going to reduce my low frequencies. Kind of filter out those low frequencies. Same thing as the regular damping. So damp regular damping is for high frequencies, low damping for low frequencies. We have a distance control, uh, which if you turn this down, it's kind of similar to the shape control on the dark hall. That has like a different feel to it. So it's gonna be how far away you are from your reverb. And then we have this diffusion control, which is new. This is gonna be essentially the density of your tail. So as you turn this down, you're gonna get a, a bit less of that diffusion. And if you turn it down really, really low, you can use this as like a weird abstract delay. So it sounds like this kind of crazy delay and playing with both the size and the distance also really make this sound crazy. So you could turn this into like a, a creepy weird delay if you want to, um, or if you keep the diffusion up, you can more, use it more like a traditional reverb. So that one's pretty fun. I like that quite a bit. Shimmer I'm really excited about because my all-time favorite third-party plugin of, of any time is, is the Valhalla Shimmer plugin. I use that all the time. Really, really fun to use for creating interesting, weird pitched reverbs that sound a bit more abstract and atmospheric, which I love. Uh, this is designed to do something fairly similar. Um, it's not quite as um, out there and abstract as the Shimmer plugin, but it does sound really interesting and I, I do really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to playing with this some more. Uh, so decay, size, delay, mod, diffusion, uh, these are all controls we've seen before uh, on quartz and dark hall. And then we have two new controls. We have shimmer amount. So if this is at 0%, it's just going to act fairly similar to quartz. But as I turn this up, this is going to pitch up or down my reverb by the amount set in the pitch control. So if I turn this up, So you can really hear it, especially after it stops playing. Let me turn up the decay. You can hear it's doing that atmospheric sound. So like I said, it's great for these like lush atmospheric kind of sounds. I could also try pitching it down, which you'll definitely hear. Great if you want to do like, really kind of weird sounds like that. So like I said, not quite as extreme as the Shimmer plugin, but really useful. Uh, I'm definitely going to explain and seeing like how far I can push this uh, later on. And then we have Tides. Uh, this is a brand new style of reverb to me. I've never seen anything quite like this. I really like it though. This is probably the, the like sleeper hit of the hybrid reverb. This is going to be your, your standard kind of reverb if I take the Tide control and turn it down. So decay, size, damping, delay all we've seen before. And then in this case, these four controls are new. So right now, pretty standard reverb sound. If I take the Tide and turn this up, this is going to add a stereo LFO to the density of your diffusion, which sounds like kind of a weird concept, but it, it sounds really cool. Uh, so as I turn this up, you're gonna hear the left and right side shifting back and forth. So hopefully you're, you're using speakers where you can hear it uh, in stereo. sounds awesome. I really love that. So we have the speed of the LFO right here. So we can speed this up. And if you turn up really high, it, sounds, it gets you cool, interesting, weird laser sounds. Um, it sounds kind of like a weird vibrato kind of sound. Right here, we have the wave control. It's going to control the shape of our LFO. 
this turned out at 0%, it's gonna be basically uh, noise, it's gonna be random. As you turn it up to 50%, it kind of smoothly transitions into a sine wave at 50%. And then as you go up to 100%, it smoothly transitions into a uh, square wave. And then we have the phase control controlling the offset between your left and right side. So I really like it. I've, I've made some really crazy weird sounds with it, much less so for your kind of traditional reverb sounds and much more for just like crazy weirdness, which I'm super into. And then lastly, we have Prism, which at first didn't really strike me. And then the more I played around with it, the more I, I found that this is actually a, a really solid algorithm. So the way this works is that uh, we don't have a lot of controls here, D uh, decay time and size, standard. And then we have the low malt, just like we did in our dark hall for a base malt. And then we also have a high malt, which means we can multiply the length of our high frequencies separately than the length of our low frequencies, which means if I do something like this, I will have a very long tail on my high frequencies and a very short tail on my low frequencies. Which sounds kind of crazy and interesting. If I do the opposite, I could have a long tail on my low frequencies and short tail on our high frequencies. creates an interesting rhythmic element to the reverb, which I think is very unique that I'll definitely want to play around with a little bit more. And then we have the crossover. Uh, this is going to be basically the frequency that separates your low side versus your high side. Uh, and that's basically it. The only other features I haven't really mentioned so far are there is a built-in EQ. So you can EQ out certain frequencies. Uh, it has four bands. Uh, band number one is either a low cut or a low shelf. Band number four is either a high cut or a high shelf. And then two and three um, are these kind of like bell curves you can put in the middle. You can also make it either pre-algorithm or post-algorithm. And you actually will notice in the little diagram here, let me turn these on, um, this little yellow dot represents the position of the EQ in your signal flow. So here we have convolution and then algorithm and then EQ. Uh, but if I switch this little control around, we now have convolution and then EQ and then algorithm. Other than that, we have it, this uh, vintage control here. This is gonna add like a little bit of bit crushing. So it, it, it changes the sample rate and bit depth. Uh, it kind of decreases the audio quality uh, if you wanna make it sound a little bit more kind of lo-fi distorted. So that's pretty much it for the hybrid reverb. It's definitely one of my top three favorite new features in Ableton Live 11. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it so much so far. Uh, but that's because I don't think people have really gotten their hands on it and really tried it out. But I, I think this is going to be a game changer for me. Uh, this is definitely going to be the very first reverb that I'm going to reach for whenever I need to use reverb. It's quick, it's easy, it's clean, it sounds great, it does abstract, abstract stuff really well, it does really clean stuff really well, it, it does everything all in one place. I'm a big fan, I'm definitely using it all the time. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit the subscribe button to get more info about new videos that we're going to be releasing. There's going to be a lot of videos coming up about the Ableton Live 11 beta and all the features that come with that, as well as other just general music production related stuff coming as well. So uh, again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have ideas for topics that you would like to see covered in a future video, please don't hesitate to reach out and hopefully I'll see you soon.